Your Holiness, the Dalai Lama, <laughs> uh, the Vice Pro Chancellor for the Malmo University, the Pro Chancellor of Global Engagement, the uh, President of the Student Union, very welcome to this sitting. Uh, we will have a welcome by a few people here before we start the lecture. So I first give the word to Per Hilber. Please come up. Good morning, everyone. On this day, it's a great pleasure for me, on behalf of our Vice Chancellor, Professor Shastin Tam, to welcome His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, to Malmo University. Malmo University is founded on the human, democratic, and academic values that have emerged from the ideals of an open society, freedom of speech, and critical thinking. Based on these values, we want to contribute to a sustainable and more equal society through research-based knowledge, critical reflection, and readiness to act. It is in this spirit that we are particularly happy to host this seminar on secular ethics and your willingness to share your thoughts on this important matter with our students, and this is much appreciated. I want also to extend my thanks for this opportunity also to IAM, and I strongly support the idea that this will be a starting point for further discussion on the role of education for a peaceful and sustainable society at our university. Our students are the future. And in times of unrest and polarization in the world, what can be more important than educating the young? So please feel most warmly welcome to Malmö University, and we all look forward to share this moment with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now I would like to give the word to Jena Pustinen, who is the president of the Student Union. Welcome, Jena. I would like to warmly welcome Your Holiness Dalai Lama on behalf of all the students to Malama. It is an extreme honor to receive such an important and honorable person to our university. I can with confidence say that we are all very excited and happy to have this rare opportunity to learn directly from Your Holiness Dalai Lama on the issue of secular ethics. We believe that our students can drive sustainable development and positive change in the surrounding society, especially given Malmö's diversity of student population from varying backgrounds where a plethora of different voices can be heard. This can be reached through knowledge, solidarity and equality which is why they are the Student Union Malmö's official values. We wish to strive for a peaceful society together in solidarity. All of these values, which we hold dear and important to us, makes us especially thankful to receive a person of such prestige who has designated a lifetime and more to promote these values, to arrive to our university and to give a lecture on such a topical issue. Thank you and a warm welcome to Malmö University. Thank you, Jena. Thank you. <laughs> and now I'd like to give the word to Cecilia Christason, of the Pro Vice Chancellor of Global Engagement and Challenge Based Learning. Thank Is that you. right, Cecilia? Yes, that's yes. right. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <clears throat> your Holiness, your visit to Malmö University and your kind presence here today is a great honor bestowed upon all of us. Welcome also to all of you sitting in this lecture hall, but also a warm welcome to all of you that follow us there out on social media, wherever you are. The university is proud to present to you our students and teachers that are truly globally engaged and daily involved in addressing societal changes and challenges. We see our students as change agents, and therefore we strive to let them engage in real, life authentic problems and dilemmas, to become critical thinkers, but also to cultivate their readiness to act for the good. Through collaboration and co-creation with many different actors in society, we hope to encourage their development as citizens who will care for sustainable learning communities. 
So our students are the hope for a better and more kind and compassionate world. We are therefore excited and very much looking forward to listen to your Holy Highness, to your words of wisdom and thoughts on secular ethics, and to the opportunity for our students to also ask questions. We also would take this opportunity to congratulate EM, Swedish development partner, and directly thank the warm-hearted president, Birte Miller, for being dedicated in making this event possible. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Lord Mayor, did I say welcome to you? Or did, did I say that? Because when I was looking at my list of names, I sort of realized, did I really say that? But very warm welcome to Lord Mayor and the Vice Lord Mayor. Very welcome as well. And uh, I would also like to say to His Holiness that in the room here, we also have people from the civil society organizations who are especially dedicated to work against racism and to work uh, for the situation uh, and enhancement of the situation for the refugees and representatives from the Malmö Museum as well. And I know that you have a, a little interest in football as well because we also have representatives from our great football team in Malmö here well. uh, who <laughs> are really dedicated to work against uh, well, racism. Football. No hope. No. <laughs> no hope. <laughs> so I would also like to say a very warm welcome to all of you. And I think you already feel how important we all feel that all of you students are. Uh, I will just say a very few words about our organization and how come we invited His Holiness to our 80th anniversary. Um, and it was because our founder, Britta Holmström, started I am. Yes. It. Yes, 80th anniversary. And uh, as she started in, in, in 1938 because of the situation in Europe, and here we are 80 years later, and we work in 12 countries around the world as well as we're working on migrating issues uh, in, in Sweden. We have about 2,000 volunteers. We have 40,000 donors who, who think that it is a good way to channel their money to support uh, for the work for a better world. And uh, in 1963, Tibetan boys came to Denmark because his holiness brother had visited his friend Prince Peter in Denmark mm -hmm. and was interviewed on the radio. And, and your brother, your holiness, he asked for the support for education of Tibetan refugees, right? Yes. And so um, I think it was 12 boys to begin with mm -hmm. that came to the Fenneberg family in outside, in Old Squadra. Yes. Fenneberg, yes. that's right. And um, I know that when I met you for the first time in 1986 in Dharamsala, I was with the Fenneberg family, and you gave John Fenneberg a really big hug, and then you asked their daughter, who was sister to these 12 Tibetan boys when they came, you asked Anina, are you still oh, here oh, with yes, your parents? Yes, yes. Remember that? Yes. 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 And so uh, we brought you uh, solar cells so that you could get hot water for, for washing, and I have not forgotten in these 32 years that you said, should that be for me? No, put it on the house for the monks, right? Oh. Yes, but we wanted you to have hot water. Um, and so that was back in 1986, the Fenneberg family already then took care about the environment, right? And so uh, in 1963, the Fenneberg family came across to IM because somebody had said, what about the Tibetan girls? They should get education as well. And so, uh, in 1964, 32 Tibetan girls came to IM, came to Sweden, and were educated as nurses, seamistresses, and other things. And all of the 32 young women, they returned to India to help along with the Tibetan refugees in India. And since then, for 54 years, we have been cooperating in different ways, with scholarships, uh, with entrepreneurship, and now we're working to support the Tibetan civil society organizations so they can stand strong as well and work in the society. So it is a very long relationship. And uh, very often when I, when I am out talking about I am and I talk about our relationship with the Tibetans, I say, I think that all of us here in Sweden who have learned about the Tibetan situation, we have gained just as much, if not more, 
than what we have contributed to the development of the refugees in, in, in India and Nepal. So we are very, very grateful for all of that and our very, very long lasting and very warm relationship. So that, that is wonderful, that is wonderful. So this is, this is really a happy moment for us that you are spending these days with us here in, in, in Malmo with the IM Sweden Development Partner. So thank you and a very, very warm welcome uh, to all of you. So now hmm? I think the word is yours, Your Holiness. Thank you, thank you. As you mentioned, uh, our relation very long and very helpful. Now, uh, nearly 60 years uh, since we become refugee. But it seems now we handful, about 100,000, uh, 150,000 re, re refugee outside Tibet. I think, generally speaking, quite successful, well organized, and not only as they look after our own self-sufficiency, self -sufficiency, but you see, we carry various and different work for preservation of Tibetan thousand-year-old uh, sort of uh, tradition, mainly knowledge. Since uh, 7th century, 8th century, uh, at that time, I think in India, the most developed sort of institution uh, uh, we call a Nalinda institution. So that uh, thousand-year-old Indian so tradition of, you see, as, as you mentioned, is the Karsa, the critical Karsa, Shimjusha, the Karsa, the Karsa, the Karsa, critical analysis is, they say, our tradition, the Nalinda tradition. Even Buddha's own word, we analyze why Buddha state that. So sometimes, even Buddha's word, we are Buddhist, but we have right to investigate why. And then, if we find some sort of point which against, uh, if we because which which we find because of contradiction through analyze, uh, then we have the liberty to reject Buddha's own word. That's a knowledge tradition. So, you see, we kept this knowledge. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, all this knowledge, usually you see, we explain these things through Tibetan language. Tibetan language. I think in Tibet, uh, since the 8th century, the translation from major, I think mainly Sanskrit text, then also some Pali text, uh, all together of Buddha's own word, about 100 volume, then commentary wrote by Nalanda masters, mainly Nalanda masters, about 220 volumes. So altogether, over 300 volumes in our language. So we, as a refugee, we make every effort to preserve this knowledge. And with immense help from Indian government, the first Indian Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, he very, very sympathetic and fully support various our work for preservation of our knowledge plus modern education. So we quite successful refugee community. Uh, uh, 
for uh, to, to successful this organization is also make made i think uh, certain sort of contribution and you mentioned fenebach mm. and then uh, one i think the uh, are you thinking of banchuk no Oh, uh, now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in 60 years, many long time our friend now gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes difficult to uh, remember. Uh, I think we, uh, as a refugee, 60 years, quite long. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the terms of a nation, 60 years, nothing. In that case, I think over, I think a few thousand years. In Tibetan plateau. Now, according to some Chinese sort of archaeologists, according to their finding, the human being exists in Tibet. Uh, 35,000 years, quite old. So, so in any way, as a Tibetan, Tibetan, the high altitude, dry climate, so since we born, such sort of high altitude, our physical, our lung, quite strong. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, you know the, uh, some Tibetan hmm, who are working with uh, Indian Army. So those Tibetan who born in India, in mainly South India, this is low. But because of their genes, I think, come from their parent. So these Tibetan who born lowland, but they is a very fit and a very high attitude. Uh, so unlike the real Indian, when they reach very high altitude, they find it very difficult for breathing. At least one week or more need some rest. Tibetan who born in India, I think genes make some differences. So uh, they find no difficulties. So in any way, Tibet, we have our own language, our own script. And in that script, as I mentioned earlier, very rich also the knowledge about the human mind, uh, human psychology. And then also, you see, the concept quantum physics. One of my Indian friend, nuclear physicist, uh, he now no longer, his name Raja Ramana. Uh, he once told me, quantum physics in the West, something new. In India, 2,600 years ago, already developed quantum physics concept. So it is quite true. I have sort of over 30 years or so the discussion with scientists, mainly uh, cosmology, neurobiology, uh, then uh, physics, particularly the quantum physics, then psychology. Uh, when we discuss with great scientists, many scientists, over 30 years. You see, uh, the quantum physics, this dead subject to us, very familiar. Because ancient Indian sort of uh, thinkers analyze these things. So, when the, the quantum, quantum physicist, when, when they, I said they, because they explain, you said, 
with confidence, right? thoroughly. Things does not e exist objectively. Ultimately, all related with observer. Observer, so long observer there, these things there. No longer observer than these, no longer there. So much depend on observer. Then the modern Kasa, the quantum physicist, if you ask, where is observer? No answer. <laughs> In India, over 3,000 years, where is observer? Investigate. Investigate. Uh, so, so this knowledge we kept. So in any way, you see, we, uh, as a refugee, stateless, uh, but you see, we carry uh, the various sort of work for preservation of Tibetan knowledge. And now, you see, we Tibetan, handful Tibetan in India, we committed Revival of ancient Indian knowledge, mainly mind, psychology. You see, these, we are ready to help them, serve them for revival of these ancient Indian knowledge. So I often, you see, telling my Indian friend uh, with full confidence, India have the opportunity and ability to combine ancient knowledge, which brings inner peace. Then, uh, modern education already now highly developed, well, not highly or quite, quite, was quite well developed in India. So India have the ability to combine modern education and ancient uh, Indian knowledge. Because it's the last uh, several decades, uh, even I think uh, centuries, they completely neglected about the ancient Indian knowledge. We kept. So like that. So nowadays, because of the, what was the main the, theme? The secular uh, ethics. Secular ethics. Secular ethics, there's no other choice except, <laughs> you see, think or learn secular ethics. Obviously, seven billion human beings on this planet we are facing, uh, besides nature disaster, but most of the problem, including killing, violence, is our own creation. So this very moment, we are quite peaceful here. And the Swedish people, I think, quite peaceful. <laughs> Except during election, you may be some busy. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you see, very peaceful. Hmm? This very moment, very peaceful. But very this moment, uh, some uh, Middle East area, killing. Syria and Afghanistan and this area. All these problems. Our own creation. And the worst thing, some problem, killing in the name of religion. Shia, Sunni, unthinkable. Both follower of Allah and follower of Quran and five times each day prayer. But then, just different name, Shia and Sunni killing. So these things, you see, the religious belief causing division and killing. How bad? Now in Burma, Buddhist, Muslim, very sad situation there. And then Egypt, Christian, Muslim, also some problem. So now, the remedy to reduce 
conflict in the name of religion, uh, people have conviction, secular ethics. That means basic human value, but moral ethics without touching religion. If that strong, then various religious tradition is very helpful to, to strengthening further the deeper human value. Due to lack of conviction about basic human value, then religion also is causing division, killing. And then on top of that, the human population on this planet about 7 billion. And out of 7 billion, well, about 1 billion non believer So these also human brothers and sisters, uh, we must bring together. We should bring these people, non believer also part of we. We, we, we. we are, they are also human beings. They also want a happy life. They have no interest about religion. But they are human beings, human brothers and sisters. Now some scientists say basic human nature is more compassionate. It's quite logical. Every child, I mean every human being, is to come from their mother. So all, you see, received immense sort of affection, love from one's own, own mother. Without that, we can't survive. So that's the way human beings develop. Then, according to scientists, uh, more compassionate mind here, your physical condition also much better. Constant anger, constant fear, hatred is actually eating our immune system. That's a medical scientist to say that. So therefore, it's quite sort of convincing. Basic human nature is more compassionate. So now problem is the existing education. So not much pay attention about this inner value. So education, Modern education, very much oriented about material value, external value. So, in spite of young sort of children, in their mind, human love, human affection, very fresh. Uh, once they join school, not much sort of explanation, not much emphasis, this inner value. So, in spite of basic human nature, more compassionate, once they join school, they eventually neglect this inner value. So now, future of world, if we want to create happier world, more peaceful world. Ultimately, these things depend on basic human nature, that's compassion. The world should be more compassionate world. Compassion not bring from outside, but from birth, we already have here. So now education this is should introduce uh, children from the kindergarten. You see, your own sort of uh, well-being, this human basic nature, compassion is very important. These days, I am telling the hygiene of physical in our education include. Now we should uh, sort of include hygiene of emotion. Hygiene of physical very good. You should take care of your physical. But a very healthy body, but too much emotion. 
not good, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> like a young lady, you see, angry face, if come with too much emotion, anger, then showing angry face, there's no longer any beauty. <laughs> 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 so real beauty of human being is warm-heartedness. Even animal. I think animal also is appreciate. If when we show dogs, cats, even some birds, non-violent way, feeding them, then birds also is come. Uh, when when some some seed rare, mm -hmm. some food, uh, some bird come and enjoy. And dogs also, when you show your smile. Oh, they appreciate. They, I think dogs, cats, they appreciate more about your sincere affection rather than just food. So all social animals, I think the very basis of their existence is warm-heartedness. Anger, expel. Basic our nature is a social animal. So now today, I think the in previous day, so they are so they, uh, social animal means uh, depend your own small village or small community. Now today's world, entire seven billion human being, uh, something like our big human community. Eastern, Eastern, also the Eastern world, Eastern world, their future depend West, Western world, East. Similarly. Northern, now here, Swedish, mm. cold climate. Uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, too much cloud. <laughs> now today, sunny, <laughs> very beautiful. Oh, but you see, your uh, the existence of this beautiful country also is depend on rest of other country. Then southern world, northern world. Uh, depend southern world, southern also similar. So now we really need, I usually call, sense of universal responsibility, sense of global responsibility, nothing to do with religion. So that I call secular. So and then with full sort of conviction about basic human value, then all religion carry the basic human value, that's human love. All religion, in spite different philosophy, different tradition, but all carry same message, message of love. So therefore, the secular uh, thinking, secular does not mean disrespect religion. In the West, uh, some my friend, some Muslim, some Christian, they sort of warn me, you should, use, you should not use the word secular. Secular means disrespect religion. But I use this secular, uh, this word, according to Indian tradition. Indian tradition, secular means respect all religions, and also respect non-believer. That's very realistic and very wise. I think because of that kind of sort of uh, secular ethics, look, India, over a billion population, uh, and all world major religious tradition live together there. No conflict. Mutual respect, mutual admiration. Because of thousand year old Indian tradition of uh, I said, uh, secular respect or religion. That's very good. So, so I 
always see, try to share with my brothers and sisters about you see, these uh, secular ethics. And particularly, younger generation, students, you are the generation of future. And me personally, when I sit uh, face to face, old people, uh, then sometimes I feel, you go first or me go first. <laughs> <laughs> now, with respect, you also like that. I, I may feel, or oh, you may go first or I may go first. <laughs> then, uh, say meeting, uh, mixing with younger people, then in spite, because uh, I uh, uh, nearly now 84 year old, I uh, psychologically, among younger people, I also feel a little bit younger. <laughs> 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 and anyway, I usually use in describing the generation of 20th century, generation of 21st century. Generation of 20th century, myself, that, that generation. And you, and some of you, and you also, oh, I think, the generation yes, yes. of 20th century. Yes. <laughs> so, 20th century, already gone. Now we are beginning of 21st century. 21st century, only Kazada, about two, two tickets, well, nearly two tickets. Otherwise, the remaining 80, eight, eight decades yet to come. So past, nobody can change. Past is past. We can learn experience from the past, but we cannot change. Future, still, you see, always possible, because of the various things to see possible, future. So the situation, future, depend now. So if we have the sort of opportunity, change future. So look to the century, too much violence. First World War, Second World War. You Swedish, I think, cleverly remain neutral, isn't it? Mm. During war. We tried. Mm. We tried. Mm. So, mm, otherwise, you see, that I think whole European suffered a lot, including Russia. And also Asia, Sino Japanese War, and then Korean War, then Vietnam War. Too much war. According to some historian, they say about 200 million of people killed through violence in the 20th century. That immense violence, and including use nuclear bomb. I have been uh, in the two places, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, where two nuclear weapons you see use. My first visit there, even some old lady who actually have some nuclear radiations, patients of some nuclear radiation, like that. And then I saw one watch, 10 o'clock, half melted nuclear holocaust. There's such thing as a metal melt. Then the human body, no question. All these human beings creation, not a desert, nature disaster. So I think it is quite mad. A human being, you see, uh, also the Kasuda. Uh, feel some kind of proud and with the name of hero destroy thousands, thousands of 
other human brothers and sisters. That's, I think, 20th centuries, I think, concept, that gone. I think early part of 20th century, when nation declare war, every citizen of the country proudly join war effort. Now that kind of situation completely gone, change. After, uh, I mean, when the war, number of American against the war. So the Iraq crisis about happened. The millions of people from Australia up to Washington has come out against violence or war. And then one clear example in early part of the 20th century, uh, European, I said the, the member state, European Union, one I think clear, clear example, France, French, Germany, arch enemy, fought. But then, after Second World War, see, that kind of mental attitude changed. So, mainly France and Germany and French de Gaulle, German Adena, these, peop these people are the main people to create European Union. So, these are sign of human being becoming more mature. Thinking, common interest is more important than national interest. Different nations also part of the Europe. So think European economy, European economy, European sort of city interest. You know, wise, isn't it? So now, uh, within 20th century, early part, later part, big change. Now we are simply the following later part of 20th century. I think uh, we human beings through tremendous difficulties, immense difficulties, I say we become more mature and thinking humanity. So now time come, we have to think about seven billion human beings on the basis of concept of oneness of seven billion human beings. We are part of that. So we have to think about seven billion human beings. You Swedish, you are here quite pleasant. Uh, and please don't forget about the <laughs> rest of the world. <laughs> we are not. So you, so, not. You, so you already sort of committed, you see, uh, you as a not remain uh, quite comfortably here. And uh, not my sort of concern what happened at the other side. You truly, you see, showing genuine concern, interest, and not only just concern, helping. Thank you. So Thank this you. good example. <laughs> like that. So therefore, you know, secular ethics, I think very relevant, I feel. All religion carries a wonderful message, but as I mentioned earlier, all seven billion cannot be religious-minded people. And then different religious, different name of religion also sometimes causing, as I mentioned earlier. So, now some questions. Yes, please. Uh, we, will, we will start out by uh, Cecilia asking you the first question. And I have to oh, tell yes. you, I have to tell you, uh -oh. Your Holiness, that the students have been very active with the questions. So we have prepared 27 of them. Okay. <laughs> but we realize that you, can, you cannot answer all of them. But uh, Cecilia, uh, the Provence Chancellor for Global uh, Engagement and uh, challenge. Challenged based learning. She will start. She has the first question. Challenge. Very good. Yes. Thank you, Your Holiness. Challenge is important. <laughs> challenge there. Then human intelligence open. Mm -hmm. If no problem, then uh, our intelligence rest. If some challenge there, then our intelligence 
ready to find answer or analyze the situation. So challenge very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Holiness. And I personally, according to our sort of tradition, the way we study, debate, we consider debate is a very important part of our study. So in order to carry debate, challenge always there. Without challenge, then because uh, no base of debate. Marve, like that. Yes. So, so yes. Uh, thank you. We, during 2015, Malmö University and Malmö received a lot of refugees coming here. And we also, um, students and teachers were very engaged and they formed a platform called the Malmö University for Refugees. And we have very actively, together with other universities in Sweden, tried to change laws and policies to open up our universities to be able to have this as a sanctionary place for, for academics all over the world. And you are talking about uh, the value about balance between um, science and education of the heart. Uh, so uh, my question is, what advice do you want to give us to all our universities to strive to become better caring institutions? Because we are academic institutions and very focused on the mind um, and science, but we would also expand and become caring institutions. That's a difficult question. I think uh, you know better. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> but, but, but you're holding... In, in principle, as I already mentioned, you see, we must utilize human intelligence and we should not content what, what, because of the what, what we have. Uh, further develop, further develop, further develop is very, very important. Our mind should open. I, I think... That much mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to share with you. And then, more detail, how to, how to do, I don't know. Well, Your Holiness, I, I think that, that the Pro Vice Chancellor is, is alluring to our discussions that we have had about uh, your curriculum for secular ethics. Because there, there is already uh, means and tools how the mm -hmm. university can, can be more uh, okay. uh, teaching for the mm -hmm. heart, right? We already start some program in India according the revival of ancient Indian knowledge in modern India. So, some sort of, or say the curriculum, curriculum, or already, you see, we carry some research work, some preparation. So, could you do it? Next year, April, uh, more also one major discussion about uh, text, about secular ethics next April. So, I want to invite you, but with your own expenses. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> As always. <laughs> uh, and, so of course, the accommodation in India, certainly we, 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 can, we, we will arrange. So, uh, most welcome. This is some teachers. And, and so for the university. Some teachers to come. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, um, we have a lot of different education programs, and one large program is for teachers, to educate teachers. That's right. Mm -hmm. Also in India, now, number, so the first sort of preparation is teacher's training. We already planned like that. It's true. Mm. So we can combine the teacher traditional training here, mm. including the secular secular ethics mm. perspective. And I know that you do a lot of work with the Emory University in the United yes, States. Yes, that's right. So next year, mainly Emory University. Mm. So they already sort of produce some, uh, what's it, because of curriculum. So we... Uh, but these are part of our sort of material to discuss mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. 
Now, I know the students are very eager and they have worked so hard to raise questions to you. So I think really we should get going on the student questions. And we have a person here that will read the questions to you and the student who have asked the question will stand up so you can have eye contact with that person too. So Ilona. Yes, that is and, oh, and, and, question, okay. and Ilona Kavrin, she is the previous oh. uh, president of the Student Union oh. in Malmo. Right, right, yes. right. <laughs> Actually, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> no? no? Am I mistaken? No. Yeah, I, no, I was not the president, but part of the Student part Union of, board. Part of the case. board. Part of the board, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> but okay, small, small mistake is good. <laughs> is it? I learn, I learn, I learn. <laughs> Every day when I learn something is a good day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, so the first question comes from Sean Trainer, Human Rights Program. Uh, what does Your Holiness think Buddhism can teach us about our innate connection to the natural world in a time when many have forgotten that the earth does not belong to us, but that we belong to the earth? Kaja, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, firstly, uh, sit. Uh, too tall. <laughs> I have to see. I have to look like this. Better to sit. <laughs> so, I respect all major religions, as I mentioned earlier. The key thing is practice of love that all religions carry. Then philosophical fields, big differences. Firstly, all major world religious tradition, two groups. One group, theistic religion, believe creator. We are tiny part of creature, creation. The another sort of group is non-theistic. Uh -huh. So Buddhism is one of them, no, no creator, rather we are self, uh, self-creation. Uh, on the basis, you know, the uh, life after life, soul, no beginning, no end. So, life after life. With that, the concept of karma. Karma means action. See, you carry good action, the re good result come. Helping other people, these are good action. Result will be you get benefit. Negative action, bad karma, harming other. It's bad karma. The result, you have to face negative consequences. So since no concept of creator, so everything depends on one's own action. Then, more detailed sort of explanation about nature. So, so the, uh, for example, the Buddhist concept, According to Buddhism, um, we talk about the, the ground reality of everything, which is the basis. Mm -hmm. So change uh, come according to the reality. So first, we have to know the reality. Then according to that reality, uh, this is, you get the, because of, because of the idea, it is possible to change. When we explain about the reality, the uh, phenomena, mindless all of that, semi inanimate, uh, inanimate objects. Oh. And then 
uh, we sentient being, including human being, here now, very similar. Kasadi means evolution. That's the Buddhist concept, very similar, evolution. Uh, so, so then, the detailed explanation, as I mentioned earlier, cosmology, how developed. All these things, you see, ultimately, particle. We call space particle, no beginning, no end. So one galaxy come and one disappear, one come disappear. So with that, as an evolution, we human being, eventually we human being, we should develop. So now, the pleasure and pain uh, not independently come, or without a cause, but our own action. So, so the without sort of concept of creator, then law of causality, cause, effect, cause, effect, cause, effect. So, Asada, the main question. So, therefore, uh, I think from that viewpoint, Earth is truly our mother. So then, the, uh, we all sentient being on this planet, see, they produced by Earth, then have to remain or depend on the Earth. So. In ancient time, human, life, human population very limited, uh, then gradually much increase, and then the technology or something, these also usually happen. So the, it now situation become our behavior also related with nature environment. So since Earth is our mother, so we not simply use nature resources, but also we have the responsibility to take care about nature, about the world. Like that. Thank you. Uh -oh. <laughs> Next question? Yes. Mm? Uh, Rebecca Olszewski, Peace and Conflict Studies. Mm? How can a single person have an impact or defend ethics as an individual compared to internationally established companies or organizations? Thank you. So, uh, our aim, seven billion human beings way of life, way of thinking should be more compassionate. Uh, so the present just, you see, me, 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 not thinking uh, we are part of the seven billion human beings. So we need, uh, through education, better awareness about reality. Uh, world also, there is some uh, dramatic change. We everybody suffer, so it is really uh, necessary. We should have the sense of global responsibility. Now that means, you see, entire seven million human beings work together. No, not uh, no, not not Kasoda. No, not that means some mental attitude, some change, change. United Nations or government cannot do. But individual, first, individual this should develop uh, certain thinking and then share with your friend. And then also education, of course, certainly. So uh, change 
start from individual. One individual share with your friend about 10 human beings. Then each, I think, uh, 10 friends, that means 100, then 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million like that. So therefore, uh, change or showing right path not come from sky, but through sort of the education, example, show other people with sense of a sense of conviction. We are the all seven billion human beings are same mentally, emotionally, physically, and most important, every the human being is a one happy life. And we are social animal. So too much self-centered attitude is the source of problem. Think altruism. Realize we are social animal. My future depends on the rest of the humanity. So even my own selfish view, I have to take care about the rest of the world. OK. Next question. Mm -hmm. Sadelin Ibrahim, Human Rights. What do we have to do to stop the genocide in the world before it is happening? And how do we allow and convince the international community to respect and implement the treaties it has signed? Oh, I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a lack of awareness, the reality. Uh, then think oneself is the center of the world. And then, very small world. I think that in ancient time, through centuries, like with Tibetan, in Tibet, World is just a small world. <laughs> <laughs> I myself, when I was in Tibet, so outside world is something very far. I then come to India as a refugee, and more contact with people from different country, uh, uh, including African uh, people. Then, you see, also, it was the day because of the re realization, re or awareness. Ah, we all share one world. They also, you see, they inspired some different color, but the brain same. With that desire for happiness, uh, do not want suffering. And we all have same right. I want to, to share one occasion. I was in South Africa, and then Suedo. I visited Suedo. There I met, I visited one family, the native black African. I told them, now you already achieved democratic constitution. But you need more self-confidence uh, and, you see, work hard and be equal with white people. Mentally, emotionally, you see, you have to you see, change. Now we are same human being. We are same human brothers, sisters. When I told that one native African, he says, African brain, uh, native African brain is kasa, inferior. I shocked. I told him, no. If we go to brain specialist, ask any differences 
or brain due to color. Any sort of specialist, they say, no differences. 100% same. So, uh, then I told, I explained a lot of sort of explanation, our own case, Tibetan and Han Chinese. The Chinese, great nation, China, great nation. Chinese people, hardworking, uh, cultured people, wonderful. But since the Chinese now system, totalitarian system, uh, is it too much secrecy? So people do not know what is reality. Everything, the government controlled propaganda like that. So some of these Chinese hardliner, they consider Tibetan backward. Uh, so I told him that kind of, sort of experience we also have. But you see, the reality, the question of opportunity, when, when we received same opportunity, we also uh, can be top, I told him. Then at last, he, with a long, long sigh, and he responded to me, yes, now I believe we are the same. That moment, I really feel sort of tremendous sort of the relief. At least I changed one human being's mental attitude. So, so now, there's one example. The different color, or, or on different sides of physical. <laughs> this one, very tall. <laughs> but you see, the brain level, same. And with the brain, brain, the intelligence or desire, we all same. So seven billion human beings, the mentally, emotionally, physically, we are same. So now, uh, African people, I have been, I think, Gabon, the Nigeria. Uh, I think the uh, the native leader. They also you see a little bit sort of I say narrow minded. One time I have the opportunity to visit Gabon. The in in the city. They like European. They are sort of the way of behavior and these things. Just outside the city, that very day, I come across some naked sort of people carry one uh, big because of the bird which they killed and bleeding. Just like uh, as a century-old simple way of life. So big within is a few miles. Big city, more westernized. Just outside, still a century-old re, cousin re, ah, oh, like that. So the local people, local leader, she must pay more attention in education. Transformation of the society. Education is the key factor. So African brothers, sisters, please now pay more attention for education. Not few individual, big car or television. Of course, the uh, useful, but main focus, education, public education. That's very important. When we become refugee, our main priority is education. Like that. Okay. What do you think? <laughs>
Casa. Este. One my sorrow. Wishful thinking is where? Sessure way. Just empty sort of what say uh, was a dream. European Union, same spirit. I think uh, Africa, too big, huge continent, great potential. Uh, now you see each nation, you see, I think lack of edu education, and then little sort of narrow minded. So they, at least uh, Northern Africa, some kind of union of Africa, I think, hopefully, to develop. Then East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa. Then mm, some kind of union. No need army, no need weapon. All resources put on farming, education. And Africa, Sahara, I feel uh, the, the, there is, I think, possibility. It, it, I mean, it, it, there is a possibility the Sahara Mediterranean Sea. Uh, so we already have the uh, technique to uh, translate or say desalination, desalination seawater through mission uh, become sweet water. So use maximum way the Mediterranean sea water and also some extent the West. Uh, then the uh, Sahara desert, you see, use this water to plantation in Sahara. Similarly, in Australia, a uh, few occasions I express Australia, all because of the site, east, west, north, uh, south, all on the sea. So plenty of sea water. So use that as a desalinate. De 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 and then should be some kind of uh, plan every year, 200 kilometers in inward from all sides, the use water to add more or say the plantation. I think possible. I think much better spend all money for such things than you see buying a weapon. I think in order to create peaceful world, I think we need demilitarization. Firstly, selling weapon. I, th I think you, Sweden, also is selling some weapon. Yes, yes, <laughs> we are, unfortunately. <laughs> so you say, making money, selling weapon. The purpose of weapon is kill, nothing. You cannot eat the bullet, you cannot eat. Just kill. Very sad. The America. Also, you see, selling a lot of weapons. Very sad. And, Your Holiness, you saw the IM uh, work we're doing with humanium metal by um, mel yes, yes, melting yes. weapons. Yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So, I think, uh, like Scandinavian countries, uh, I think uh, you have the moral responsibility mm -hmm. to promote. And then that gun, Kasa, should you use Kasa? No, uh, His Holiness is referring to no weapon, the Reuterswerd weapon with the knot mm -hmm. in it, right? Yes. So these things, I think, are wonderful. So uh, these things, not easily to achieve, but constant effort, realistic effort, with determination and with ultimate goal, peaceful world, no weapon, no killing. Oh. Okay, please, Ilana. Oh. Yes? 
Malin Sundström, PhD student in care science. Loneliness is an increasing problem for many people around the world. How can we fight this, since it is something that affects people and their life and health in many ways? Loneliness. Ka. Loneliness. It entirely depends on your own way of thinking. If you think me, 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 you deliberately try to loneliness feeling. <laughs> oh, if we think entire seven million human beings, then uh, that's the, how to say, I think, uh, powerful weapon to eliminate lonely feeling. As a Buddhist monk, uh, my daily sort of practice thinking is entire sentient being are same sentient being who want happiness, do not want suffering. And particularly entire human being are same human brothers, sisters. So, so then you never uh, sort of feel lonely. Or seven billion brothers, sisters there. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> Wherever I go, you see, uh, not necessarily to introduce each other, but so long, same human, human face. Oh. And, you see, one nose, one mouth, two eyes. Then no need because of introduction. As soon as you see such, meet such human sister, human brother, I want happiness, they want happiness. We are same. We, we are same right, be happy. Then, so with that feeling, I never feel lonely. Wherever I go, I always see, because uh, of the talk, cheating, teasing. If the other one, yes. <laughs> you know, in spite of my sort of, or say the, uh, teasing or something, not smiling, then they finally I do this. <laughs> 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 then, then, then a smile come. <laughs> so like that, P particularly some police with, with uniform, and I do that. They do that, then, and I smile, <laughs> no smile, run like that. Then I ask them, please smile, but still it's difficult. Then I do this. <laughs> 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 okay. Yes, they face it. Charlotte Peterson, PhD student in urban studies. Mm -hmm. Should we, as individuals, groups, and societies, respectively, tolerate intolerance? Kasa. Now, I think uh, genuine practice of tolerance, I think not just faith, but reasoning. If someone, you see, take, for example, take advantage on you, analyze. If let, let that person, whatever he want, not much harmful, then okay. But the Hazuda, uh, uh, too much sort of uh, take advantage. And eventually, they also suffer. That person also. Then, out of a sense of concern of their well-being, then take some measure to stop the extreme sort of, because of extreme way to take advantage on you. So analyze, analyze. Then, the countermeasure, the too much sort of, because of the, uh, advantage, too, too much sort of, of the advantage. Right? Too much of intolerance. Oh, yes. oh, oh, then analyze without anger. Take 
countermeasure. Countermeasure without anger is more effective. Too much anger come, then the your sort of analytical thinking then cannot function properly. Anger come, your intelligence then become kasoda, not normal function. Without anger, mind calm, then our intelligence utilize fully. Too much emotion, intelligence cannot function. So since if you believe God, God give us this wonderful brain. <laughs> if you not believe God, uh, the evolution way, we have this wonderful brain. So it is really worthwhile utilize this brain. We should not remain like animal, like tiger, elephant, physically very strong, but the intellectual here, intelligence, very small. <laughs> so we, our head, our, our, so our head compared elephant much smaller, but brain which you use, which you should develop intelligence is our, because our brain is compared, compared with our physical, very, because very big. So that's uh, our advantage. Now we must utilize human intelligence properly in order to use human intelligence your mind, your emotion must be neutral. If too much sort of anger, I say they, because I read, Mindu, Mindu, you show. If you have too much aversion towards things, or an attachment, too much sort of close, then our intelligence cannot function properly. So our mind must be neutral. Then our intelligence can use fully through because of the use our intelligence fully, then we will know the reality. According to that reality, then every our action become realistic action. Too much emotion, we can't see the reality. Even though your motivation may be good, but since you see, you're sort of looking the situation too much biased way, so unrealistic. So any sort of unrealistic method fail bring your goal. So neutral and analyze oh, the reality. One good things or some you feel because of the pleasant, happy, happy. One negative things you feel because uh, of unhappy. But the same sort of thing look from different anger. Because angle what way? Or perspective, or angle. Same sort of thing look from different angle you can see the sort of different sort of picture. All these emotion, just one anger. Then anger, suspicion, these things happen. The same look from different uh, anger. You see different thing. Then intensity of anger reduce. In this respect, I think ancient Indian psychology, I think a lot of sort of information, the system of our emotion. Okay, <laughs> system of our emotion. So more fuller knowledge, more fuller awareness, the whole system of emotion, then much easier to tackle this emotion. So whether believe the Indian religion or not, some of this knowledge, ancient Indian sort of tradition about emotion, about mind, is something useful. I usually consider these things are academic subject. 
not a religious subject. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Yannick Deller, Peace and Conflict Studies. A reoccurring theme in Yannick studies is the production of knowledge. So, since ethics are a specific type of knowledge, who gets to produce it? And who defines what ethics is? And then following up to this, is there some sort of universal ethics or do we have to look at ethics more of a local, local or culture-specific phenomenon? Kansa. Mm. I think ethic, oh. and simply, I think the very concept of good and bad, what is the basis of good and bad? <laughs> uh, they, uh, of course, according to religious belief, then is there something different explanation. That is something different, but secular, Generally, uh, dogs or uh, birds, they also, you see, appreciate some sort of, uh, sort of what's the attitude which brings happiness or pleasant in their mind. That's good. Any action, any attitude, brings more suspicion, more uncomfortable, uh, that is bad. Because we want happiness, we do not want suffering. So basis of good and bad is the happiness and unhappiness. And then the further question, why, why we want happiness? Then something complicated matter. <laughs> 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 but simply, I think the good or bad action, verbal action, physical action, uh, all these, something bring happiness, pleasure, joyful, that's good. And then something fear, fearful or uncomfortable, that's bad. So as I mentioned earlier, the, according to Indian tradition, the soul, no beginning. So, loss, cause and, cause and effect, and then previous life, this life. So, all this, uh, say, so basically, we want, including insect, want happiness. This is our right. We do not want suffering. This is our right. So any verbal action, physical action, mental action, bring some uncomfortable, that's bad. Bring some joyful, that's good. So it is, so, uh, ethics, anything which brings some happiness, that's ethic, ethical thing. Deliberately, rest in humming other. Because they also, like me, want happiness, do not want suffering. If someone use harsh word to me, I feel uncomfortable. So therefore, I should not restrain harsh word to other. So that's an ethic, ethical thing. Okay. <laughs> and so thank you very much, Ilona. And thank you very much for all your questions. And I know there are many that are not answered, but unfortunately we have a time limit. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, now I think we'll have a uh, thank you from the university, Your Holiness. So the um, chancellor would like to say thank you to mm -hmm. you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
to this century's mind, generation. Mind-blowing <laughs> moment. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I must say that on, on behalf of the, all our students and staff, this has been a wonderful moment for us. I think it has been very inspiring, and I think also it's a starting point for something also that we will consider for the future to also have these discussions uh, around the social and the emotional uh, aspects of uh, and the ethics uh, in education and so on. And I think that is a, a very good moment uh, for us in that respect. So we are most grateful for uh, your time here and also for all the time to respond to the students' questions. Yes. And uh, we are uh, very thankful for that and we have a few small gifts for you as a send-off uh, before we uh, uh, end this session. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What's the inside? Small, small cup for your tea. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> tea with this? Yes. <laughs> Your Holiness, before you leave, would you sign your name on the chair? Yeah. Somewhere where you like. Maybe you will sign your name here. Thank you. Thank you very much. What? Buddhist monk, Dalai Lama. <laughs> Did you all hear what His Holiness was saying? No. What was it you wrote? Hmm? Tell, tell them what you wrote. Oh, Buddhist monk, Dalai Lama. <laughs> so that's on the chair. So now, if you want to use this, if you want to say something. Just want to say. Well, physically, physically, We may see in future or may not, but mentally, always together. I remember you always, and I think you also remember me. <laughs> so, so let uh, let us be happy human being. Okay, constructive human being, and share our world uh, and try to build our world, happy world. Thank you. to go this side and take one picture from here. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> and then one here. Okay. With big smile. <laughs> You can take care of this. She is she's a deacon of, of back to where I'm active, and she will carry this for the room. Thank you. 